Uh, Tom Matthews from Matthews Engineering here, uh, just showing this uh, setup that I rigged up to uh, check the uh, optical density of some uh, laser safety glasses as well as some uh, window material that's on one of the laser centers uh, that I have. Um, so what, uh, what this setup is, is uh, uh, there's a uh, 1064 nanometer laser diode here with a uh, laser diode controller. I'm running this at 200 milliamps. Um, so a probably about a hundred milliwatts or so coming out of here. Um, and then that's uh, infrared invisible light uh, is going through this chopping wheel. Um, so I'm chopping the laser. Uh, the chopper is controlled by this box back here and it's phase locked to the oscilloscope sweep. So that's why the square wave is standing still there. But if you chop the beam, then you can tell if you're near the noise floor or not. You can tell if you're too close to the noise floor of the detector because if there's a square wave over here, you know that the detector, you know, is detecting a significant signal. If you just get a flat line, then you're too far into the noise floor. But then I also have an attenuator here that's good to 60 dB in steps um, and as well as a, a, a 40 dB worth of gain over here. In between the gain here and the, and the attenuator steps here, I can pretty much tell, uh, you know, accurately uh, how many dB of, of loss a, a sample that I put in the path, uh, you know, will cause. And then uh, uh, the optical density numbers are one-tenth of the dB, so if you get a 60 dB loss, then that's optical density 6. That's very good. Optical density 4 is pretty good, too. But uh, the 1064 nanometers is invisible, and that's that's the other reason why it's dangerous and why you want to wear glasses. You can't even see if you're getting flashed by it. But uh, this little card helps uh, will convert the beam to visible light. You can tell that the beam's beam's there, and it's over here. It's going through the chopping wheel, through the attenuator, and into this detector, and then over to the scope where I can see the uh, the signal levels. Um, for example, let's look at, here's a, a, a good pair of glasses that I measured. Uh, these promise OD4+, plus, but I measured more than 60 dB, probably about 67 dB. Um, but you can just see, without going through the pain of how I do the calibrated measurement, you can see right away, watch the scope when I put that, when I put that lens in the way, you can tell that it's definitely blocking the 1064 nanometers. These glasses, um, I can't remember who I got these from. I've got a couple of lasers here in the shop and one of the import suppliers sent these with them. They look, hey, that looks like the maybe laser safety, but uh, look at this. When I put that in there, <laughs> nothing. So these are, uh, I put I put a label on it that says don't use these for laser safety. I may smash these and put them in the trash. Um, and then um, here's some uh, Kentec material. Uh, this is, um, uh, I think this is ACRX, make sure, ACRX-6NDY, and this measured uh, a little more than 60 dB, but you can, again, you can see that it's clearly doing something. Um, and then the smoky glass that was in my laser center, I removed it, it's in back in the laser center, uh, and a fully enclosed machine, it doesn't do much either. So I think we're either going to black those out or put warning signs not to look in there. But there's a lot of people run open machines, so it's no worse than that. But it's, it's not good because it implies that there's a safety barrier there when there's not. But anyhow, I just thought I'd show everybody this test setup. Um, I'm sure there's more professional setups, but this setup is uh, basically correct and, um, and gives a, a quick way to confirm whether these materials are actually blocking the uh, near-infrared laser light. Tom Matthews, Matthews Engineering.